I'm Tina. This is To The Inner Wild. Welcome back. Welcome to all the new kids. Deciding to go ahead and do a second read for the day to get ahead of myself, even though I'm a little behind in terms of self-judgment or in um, the human condition of starting and finishing a project or a video, let's say. <laughs> I have, I counted how many I have pending and it's, I think it's reached a dozen. <laughs> so, even though I feel the need to forgive myself, on the same accord, I feel like is there really a reason to scold myself over something that I believe should be when in divine timing it'll just flow naturally? It'll just it'll just come to be, right? So I do make attempts to finish my videos, right? then there's there's always some kind of hesitation. And in life you know that things never really work out when you force them to, to happen, regardless of how experienced and well versed you are on such a subject. So I'm going with that note, okay? And maybe I don't need to forgive myself. You attempt, and if there's a need to step back, there's no need to over-scrutinize, and that will eventually lead to self-scolding, self-sabotage in the end. And so, uh, I just thought that might be important to call out, not just for your sake, but definitely for mine, because once I engage more fully, and red flag those thoughts, those actions, those emotions that manifest itself to the exterior, well, that's that's something to nip in the bud. Uh, yeah, so there's no need to overthink it, you know. Oh, that's what I was going to say. So when we face instances like that where we feel like we need to be there and we're here to express some sort of dissatisfaction with our placement is um well that's not engaging in our divinity is it right it is disrespecting it so to speak and so oh i see a little i saw a pumpkin maybe something's supposed to happen in the fall hmm? um with these oh how cool this is this is sage scrying <laughs> i don't know if there's such a thing but i think there's a thing because i'm seeing it in the air <laughs> smudge scrying i'm i'm pretty sure it's got to be a thing or i'm calling it out as a thing i feel like it's a thing okay so anyway um, yeah, so, okay, back to finishing that thought is, um, here, let me just take those off for a second. I don't even know where my new glasses are. These are my old glasses. Um, so I'm quite disturbed as to where these missing ones are, right? I'm gonna find them. I'm gonna find them. So, okay, finishing that thought, okay is ooh. oh my I'm gonna have to buy a new bed sheets oh my gosh my husband's gonna get so upset uh, give me a second did it go all the way through I know what I'm gonna do I'm gonna turn the bed sheets right around so that all the holes burn marks are on my side then I'm gonna get out of trouble for a little bit until we can afford new bed sheets and a new top cover and then it won't matter so anyway it's not it's not gonna affect him okay I can't believe that's like the second or third one that happened today <sighs> okay well Let's finish that thought, okay? When something, when we encounter something like that, an instance where we're starting a project and then we feel like, okay, here's our personal deadline set or even, um, even in work, like you have a deadline set from 
your higher ups or whoever you're answering to. If it doesn't come to fruition at that point, well, you know, when you, when it comes down to it, it's going to be finished when it's done. And anyone who works in the creative field know that's really the truth of the matter is it's done when it's done. But you know, we live in these hamster wheels trying to make ish happen. And then we just come out, we produce this thing. Sometimes, you know, we, it puts us on edge, like we work at our best uh, during the last hour. And, and that way we have a finished product. But, you know, when we do not encounter such an instance and we have an unfinished product at said deadline, um, and again, whether that be um, self-imposed or put on our agenda by... Uh, I wanted to say hierophant by the hierarchy. Then we don't, we're not supposed to consider that a failure. So therefore, why behave in such a manner, in a self-scolding manner, even if it's as subtle as saying, you know, I forgive myself. So that's what I feel like is important to understand the the encompassing nature in every degree possible of self-sabotage when it comes to that inner critic, that self-talk, that inner voice that gets mixed up with, is that my intuition or is it uh, ego in combat with it, right? Telepathy music keeps on coming, doesn't it? So. Anyway, it's okay. It's all intended for love, right? <laughs> anyway, so I'm going to put these back on because this is, this is truly what I need to see the world in a 2020 view. In fact, I have poor vision to the point where if I wear my glasses that are supposed to imply... 2020 vision after putting them on. I don't really think I have 2020 vision when I put these on. So let's just entertain myself for a second because I deserve to have a 2020 view with the world. Okay? Sometimes, yeah, I, I deserve that. I've gotten this far through the motions of it all, through purchasing them, and to not put them on because. Mm, because of that self-conscious nature of, of, it has nothing to do with authenticity other than hindering it, right? Yeah. So, I noticed that in the past 24 hours of wearing my glasses, that I I'm a lot more engaged with the world because I see more of it. I Everything is crisper and clearer. And so I'm going to be wearing them more often because I said so. And it feels so weird because when I see myself in this frame right here, right? Hello, right? When I see myself here, I feel like I act like a different person with my glasses on and I don't think it's like that superhero effect where I feel like it's a, a mask to the identity. In fact, I think it's the opposite of it. I feel like it unfolds more of my truer self. Like I see myself in a different way, my truer self the self that needs to move forward with what she needs to move forward with to make it through her day to be at her best regardless of something that feels like uh what do you call it you know like Forrest Gump when he has those um leg braces kind of feels like that it's a little over exaggerated but you get the point that's kind of what I feel like anyway Let's go ahead and pull from this new deck here. And also, because I feel like I still need a little bit more grounding, maybe you do too. Um, so anyway, I just wanted to call that out because I thought 
maybe you, you notice a difference too. So I like being more of myself and I don't want to mm, I don't want to mask that any further. No time for that. So um, gosh, there's so many burn marks on my bed. Okay, so because I feel like I need a bit more grounding, I'm going to go ahead with the Book of Shadows again, Volume 2. So below. And then, I don't know, I really feel, I'm really feeling this Deviant Moon Tarot. And because it is the evening, I shall pull from that deck too. And what really called me out, because I feel like I need, um, needing more love right? Um, Self-love, dignity, integrity, when it comes to relationships, really kind of calling back in the power. And, and, and see what I make of it on my own, yeah? So, that is what I'm going to do for all of us, right? Okay. Let's move forward. Oh, this these were supposed to be... I didn't finish off my reading from before. Okay, that's okay. Did I take a picture of it at least? I don't know if I did. Right now, let's go ahead and focus. And light this up one more time. One more time. Alright, spirits. Please join us now. I've made a few boo-boos. So please help me keep this area safe. <laughs> and secure. Yes. Please send us messages of love and light. Coming through from our spirit guides. Our guardian angels, ascended masters. Yes. Divine beings of love and light for our highest good. That's one. All right. We have the tower in reverse. Yeah, we want one more from here. Oh, that just came out. Oh, no way. This came from the last reading, which is the Empress and the Lovers. I had this strange feeling where I was actually supposed to continue that reading into here, this circle. The other two were, because I said there were three major arcana, and then the other one was a three of wands. So the, the other one was the magician that came through with the empress and the lovers. So now we have the tower in reverse, the empress, and the lovers in upright. Okay, what's on the bottom of the deck? death in reverse okay okay all right spirit now i have this strange feeling that we are supposed to use this deck to clarify so let's do that let's and this is the last card that i got too on the last one when I closed out, it was the Empress. Huh. Let's compare the Empress in both. Just for the heck of it. I want to go ahead and do that. Okay. So, the Empress in the grounding deck. She is a loving, caring, hardworking individual. She gets ish done with a gentle touch, with a magic touch, yes. 
she has people who look up to her in all walks of life, especially that of children. Hmm? She's a healer, healer of all that surrounds her. I, ha I heard a light ringing in my right ear. It was, almost, it was very peculiar. It was like a ting, almost like a Tibetan singing bowl. Anyway, and then here we have the Empress as um, fertile. I can see that because she has three boobs. <laughs> Sorry if, if that's an offensive term for you. Um, and she's part creature. Like you see that reptile backing and tail? So what I also learned um, when trying to find out more about salamanders is they're very similar to lizards. They regenerate their limbs when cut off. Noting that she is extremely fertile, mm, that it's common for when they regenerate, they often multiply. So they might have two or three tails. And that for me is a huge uh, truth in context of like this super human or super species resilience and and I think that's a really great depiction for the Empress to note that she is not just extremely fertile but has this extreme resilience to her yes and the tail what I was trying to get at was they use it to maneuver, to help navigate, to create balance. How interesting is that? She even has a hind legs with it. So she's the boss. Hmm? She is even on a checkerboard. Do you see that? Which tells me that she's strategic, just like she can wear many hats. In fact, she assumes that role in a way that if she was widowed, mm -hmm, she could still shoulder on the responsibilities of not just being herself, her receptive nature, but the active qualities of logic, strategy, um, protection in, in, the capacity of an emperor, right? You see the chessboard? That's her base, foundation, that quality in her to be able to truly master that, maximize potential in that. There's an exposure to strategy of the spans, the landscape of everything to be receptive to all that is, yeah? And to know when to speak, when to act, when to when to make movement, and when to retract. Hmm? Very interesting. She also is crowned. Mm -hmm. Both are both have some sort of head covering, which notes their divinity, majestic nature. With hers, it's more practical. Yes, humble. There's stars on it, so that d further depicts divinity, divine union. And when you cover your head, because it is the crown, uh, you also exercise this non-verbalized sense of self-love. Because when you cover your head, you're protecting that, that connection with the divine from those that you acknowledge in the landscape that are unhealthy for you, that will try to seize that opportunity of divine connection or try to eliminate it, sever it, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. for whatever reason. And I'm not going to even dive into the negativities of that because that's besides the point. And do you, I like how she's kind of looking to the side. It's almost like a fake in basketball. I don't know too much about basketball, but when you kind of fake a pass, you look one way and you, I mean, that's an elementary form of a fake. You look one way and you pass on to another. It gives the illusion of that. But if you see here, uh, her eyes, 
because she's looking to this side, it's more of like a direct focus to you, right? As the end of it, as the intended recipient of that eye contact. I like this in the Deviant Moon. It took me a little while to really blend energies with it. But I like how her cape is also lined with this some sort of like uh, metallic scaling, almost like a dragon, right? So she's somewhat mastered the beast inside mm -hmm. and capitalized on those qualities. So she doesn't hide the demons inside. As you can see, she's in direct connection with the dark side of her. Mm -hmm. And she is so much more empowered by it because she doesn't hide who she is. Do you see that she's wearing these kind of boots? They could be easily made to, to disguise these cleft feet, the darkness within her, but she chooses not to. It almost has this like Frido Kahlo um, effect where she kept the facial hair because it was her identity. Why is she going to mask it for anyone else? That's how she was born. Beauty, it's just a matter of perspective. How we choose to illuminate or shadow it. What we are born with. What we've encountered in life and what we've carried along the way. What has physically morphed us. Because when you think about it on a level on a cellular level what what we go through in life impacts us on a deep level a, not just a subconscious level but that's how disease rises from dis-ease a an extreme impact of dis-ease within so when you think about that on what you encounter in life and how that changes a person. I don't even know if there's such thing as forgive and forget truly. Maybe the intention behind it, but actually executing that to, to, I, I maybe understand the concept behind it, the intention behind it, but I, I think there's a better way of handling truths that are that feel unpleasant when encountered when faced when heard I think there's a healthier way in handling that so back on track here she's not disguising that she acknowledges it she doesn't hide it from the world okay she knows what she is and she feels confident in it because she's mastered it to, and she's walking in those shoes, right? That's her identity. Not disguising anything about her. See, she's just wearing a cape. <laughs> so she's, and a crown. That's, that's an ultimate superhero. <laughs> and the tip of her tail, look, is a orange flower. Orange is sacral, yes? So it's passion, it's drive, and it's also a part of identity because it's melding of yellow, which is the uh, solar plexus, that's your identity, your creativity, right? And red, which is the grounding effect, your root chakra. Mm -hmm. Okay, I think we've thoroughly covered this card. <laughs> okay, I feel like that should stay. I feel like that should stay. Okay, so I feel like we need clarifiers. So the tower in reverse spirit. Okay. We have eight. Is that death? Eight. Look. How interesting. Okay, let's read after, okay? Okay, let's get a clarifier on the lovers, please, spirit. Oh. Okay. Knight of Cups in reverse. And then a clarifier for death on the bottom of the deck is 
four of swords how appropriate oh my gosh okay now I'm going to pick from the heart and soul cards this is Tony Carmine Salerno I believe is the maker anyway I was really excited about getting these cards in and it's oracle cards for personal and planetary transformation I've always wanted the heart shaped cards yeah heart and soul and I feel like I kind of need that planetary personal transformation yes because we are cosmic beings as we modify our behaviors our thoughts ourselves we're also transforming that of the collective oh there's one okay hmm. Oh my gosh, did you see? There's... It does look like planets to me. Hmm? When you look at these cards, do you see that? Do you see that? These are all more like humans and landscape, right? This is the only one that I've seen that look looks more like a planetary alignment. How cool. Okay, we're going to save that one for after. So, the tower in reverse. We look at this. She is fuming. Let's look at it in upright first. She is fuming. She is on the phone. She is, wait, she had, yeah, she's on the phone. She's fuming to the point where, you know, when you're angry, so angry that you have to like hold on to something because you're, you're probably gonna, you're about to lose it. Right, so you need to hold on to something to grab hold of like reality. Like, is this really effing happening? Right, I need to make sure I I don't collapse. Right, she's so upset that she needs to hold on to something tangible and real to know that this is really happening. Furious, and something broke. It's a coffee cup. It looks like it. It was from her own doing. It's not like she's calling someone up to say, Hey, did you break this coffee cup and leave it out on the kitchen floor? No. It looks like that was a part of her. Her own doing. So, it looks like there's a little bit of stuff that was spilled out from the cup. But it looks dry, like dregs of some kind of drink. Because it doesn't look like it's in liquid form. Or it's been sitting there for a while to the point where it dried on the floor. And so that's the upright version. So if it's in reverse, what does that mean? Moving on from that? The next stage of that, maybe? So let's look. The tower is number 16. In reverse, it means trying to avoid something by denial or delay leading to increased turmoil. Denial or delay. Avoidance. Why would it? Okay, let's move forward. Let's look at the clarifier. So I don't know what eight is, but it looks like death to me, like a David and Goliath. Oh man, it's justice. Justice. Oh, <laughs> oh my gosh, it's thirteen. All right, I was just glazing over thirteen. Oh, it's death. Okay, 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 okay. I think I need to read the first line first and then the second line, okay? So we already covered the tower, the empress, and then now we're at the lovers. So the lovers expresses a couple who's shopping for a new home. So this is established love. It's love, love, right? The love of, you know, the start a new beginning it's established but it's new a new beginning like elevating that love into a deeper commitment right they're they're going to buy a house together and she's pointing to the one that you know caught her eye and he's supporting her you see that's funny they, they have that Sadie Hawkins look where they're mirroring each other down to their attire 
so it's perfect for them. Okay, so what do the lovers say here? It is number six. I should have known that. I've been getting that lately. Okay, making decisions uh, that honor the wisdom of the heart. Okay. I like my interpretation better. Sorry. I think I'm going to go with that. That's in reverse. In this picture, how weird is that? For sale, for sale. Oh my gosh, that feels so weird. Okay, so thank God it's not the same couple. Maybe it's the neighbors. <laughs> how weird is that? The neighbor, they're neighboring cards, being that this is the bottom of the deck in reverse. So this woman has to leave. It's almost like it feels like her face uh, conveys the essence of being evicted. Mm -hmm. Because there's a boy and a girl, two children, in the background at the doorway, concerned, looking at their mom. And then there's a realtor who is putting a for sale sign implanted into their front lawn. Then the dad is packing up boxes into the car. If it's the end, does that mean it's the beginning when it's in reverse? Uh, I'm thinking if it's in reversal, because it doesn't always mean the opposite, okay? Sometimes it's an ac accentuating or maybe the trailing effects. Ooh, death also means rebirth, holding on to something that is over. The residual effect, right? Holding on to something that is over. Do you hear this? The song is... Do you see that? How that is trippy. How how is that holding onto something that is over? Oh my gosh. This is a love reading. <laughs> It could be career-based, too. I like this song, too. How strange is that? I know, I know why I don't really wear glasses. Because I don't feel pretty. <laughs> so, it's fine. Um... I always feel like I have to wear this mask of prettiness in order to be accepted. Even if it's like low-key, pretty, like, I'm not wearing any makeup today, hashtag no makeup, you know, that kind of thing. Mm, it's... <sighs> That's why. That's why I don't wear the glasses. Whatever. Whatever. So, holding on to something that's over. And that's the key message on the top row. Oh man. Denial. Oh man. Okay. I think somebody's gone through a recent breakup. Uh, and how I describe this lover's card. Is basically what what kind of a relationship it was so whether it was a new budding relationship or an established one regardless of what level it was at it was at the point of the possible like the, the elevation point right that that turning point that it was on the verge of possible like a higher trajectory of possible elevation yeah. there's something that happened because you had something good with your girl or guy 
and you know, see this nurturing quality. Someone was giving more. It was it was an imbalanced relationship, okay. But there was a sense of commitment where it was it had the potential of elevation, elevating, right? It's getting to that point, uh, kind of tapping you on the shoulder um, to that point. But it didn't get there. So someone's in denial of what has transpired. Because somebody effed up, right? Somebody effed up. That's their own personal thing right there. So they're in denial about what they did. Okay, somebody effed up. And there could have been a child involved. If not, the empress was nurturing towards the inner child of her emperor or knight or page, whoever that other being was. Yeah, somebody effed up. And so someone's clinging on to something that is over. So the where we're at right now is a place of empowerment. I feel like the majority of who will watch this, because this is a timeless read, um, takes on the suit of the Empress. And the feminine quality that is now focusing on herself as almost like a single parent to the empire, right? I feel like, just like I said, that widowed effect that she is empowering herself by wielding the balance of both energies. So bringing the yang, the masculine, uh, I think it's animus qualities, to back to the forefront. Mm -hmm. and you see there's only one throne there. She's independent. That's where I think we're at right now. That's clarifying our stance as the empress. Mm -hmm. Or if this is, there's cross watcher males watching this. That's what's, that's what, I don't even want to say your girl, but that's what your ex is focusing on right now, which is rightful. So to elaborate further on the tower, we have, which number is this? 13, death. Oh, wow. Okay. Okay. Two corpses, a mother and child, stand on a polluted beach. And by the way, if you have ever set foot and laid eyes on a polluted beach, it is nasty. It is nasty. It is worse than... Uh, I don't even want to go there, okay? It's just nasty. It is disgraceful. Uh, like, it pisses me off. But let's move on. Okay, on a polluted beach, the child attempts... Like, it is so disgraceful. It is, like, sacrilegious for me because the beach is a place of healing, of harmony, of tranquility. And it's not just to serve me what it does personally for me. Like, of cleansing. Oh, it's like a sacrilege. Oh, my goodness. And I'm like cycling through all these old images of like dirty beaches and and dead sea life washed up Ugh. that is a perfect depiction of death <clears throat> and oh it's sick all right the child attempts to re-enter the womb of his mother but is held back another will be born soon with death comes rebirth the upright meaning is change, metamorphosis, loss, end of ways. This is beneath the tower in reverse. So, <laughs> change is, is due, okay? 
the child can no longer re-enter the womb, this, this, this not just a sacred place, sacred space, but what was once his home, his sense of comfort, of tranquility, like, you know, a, a beach, right? And even though there was a bond, a sense of strong connection, of home, she won't allow for it. She very much resembles to me what the Empress is. And right here, when you look at the, the true Empress card in there, the Empress is usually fertile in a way of showing a, her womb, right? And she doesn't look pregnant here. But here, there's a sense of pregnancy, um, of, of fertility in knowing, in understanding, in the abundance, the fertility of knowledge and what to do, th what's next, right? At the tip of her tail, which is a sense of balance in navigation, is a flower, which, w which we already covered as sacral, passion, drive, intensity. Um, a blending of your identity and cre creativity from your solar plexus down to your root chakra, which is grounding. That is an expression of fertility here. So when you look at it in its traditional Rider Waite Smith format, where you, you can assume that this death card um, holds the idea of the Empress, right? With death comes rebirth. So the cycle of life follows only one way it doesn't revert back the other the only way is to cycle through and through to reincarnate to reinvent yourself to reinstate yourself right so he this this child cannot go back he must follow through the cycle of life wow that's underneath denial this is the first time that I've actually formally used clarifiers. Okay, so underneath the lovers, we have the Knight of Cups. The Knight of Cups is chivalrous, right? The knights are known to come in and out of your life frequently. That insatiable quality, that writer's quality, almost kind of reminds me of Jim Morrison from The Doors. Just in and out of your life, that kind of bachelor, free spirit unbound youth so there's a sense of volatility in express in, a, in expression and he hasn't quite mastered his ways in delivery to cons be considered a knight yes there's a there's a sense of lack of stabilization in discipline uh, when it comes to understanding the fuller scope of when to retreat right he doesn't quite call the shots he makes the shots yes so that's the knight of cups and when you relate that to love emotion the delivery of it and i see that he's half like a sea creature almost that's the first time i've seen that and when you see that on a polluted beach and then the empress and then he's on the cleaner side of the beach right he has retreated almost so maybe he's mo he's moved away he's he's kind of moved he's slowly moving out of the energy into transformation into change into acceptance but he's held on to this, this denial, this sense of denial for quite a while. So he's moved away from it in the mystery, following, trying to find comfort in the mystery of it all, right? Kind of like toasting to the moon, like, I don't know what, what the F is, is, is in store for me, but cheers anyway, right? Uh, it looks like he's, he's not even... That's funny. In reversal, that's what I take it as. He's not. He's no longer giving the cup away to someone, presenting it to someone. He's just like he's. It's a drink for himself. He's like, cheers to the moon. Like, f everything, right? 
uh, yeah, like almost in a sarcastic way, not not so callous, but maybe callous onto himself, maybe, yeah, denial, he's done something wrong, or several things wrong, in reverse, deceptive person, falsehood, a scam, what did I say, so it didn't work, So it, it could be either that you were involved with a manipulative person. I'm sorry for you cross watchers who are taking on this male energy. Maybe I shouldn't be sorry about it. I'm not going to apologize for your misdoings, right? That's not my burden. That's your burden. I'm just simply calling it out. So don't, don't kill a messenger. Okay. So you did something wrong. Okay. Talking to the male energy. So you did something wrong. Both you and I know it. You and your girl knows it. You and your partner know it. You and I know it. And uh, whether that be direct manipulation, direct deceptive energies, whether you, you purposefully withheld something in order to manipulate the direction that you wanted it to go in, right? The elevation of of not the game but of your relationship base onto something further there was either a direct manipulation in that or an unintentional self-sabotage where you masked yourself you disguised the truth you melded in a way in order to possibly elevate it to that state to get what you wanted out of a new beginning a new start a new home with your new love or your love to become more established. So you did something wrong. You're in denial about it. You can't go back. And you're kind of toasting to the world like, you know, I guess this is it. Well, let's have a drink, right? So underneath death in reverse, which is holding onto something that's over, this is the bottom of the deck of the first row, is the bottom of the deck on the second row, which is Four of Swords, which is rest, retreat, reflection. When you look at this, this Deviant Moon Tarot, it carries both energies of the yin and yang on the face. One side is sleeping, like the dark, volatile side of it, okay? It's, it's not active at the moment, but has the capability of awakening. So this is rest and retreat, and thank goodness that that part of this person, which is I'm guessing the Knight of Cups, or it could be both energies. It could be both energies because the female aspect of it may be, um, I think, advancing sooner because, look at this. When you look at this, the Empress, the new Empress, is looking at the death card smashing onto this. Like, this is what I have to do. I have to set my foot down. I have to set my foot down. I have to set my foot down and say no to this, 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 this soul being, right? This, I have to set my foot down. I, I can't, I can't do this anymore. So she's higher up, right? She's looking down at this death car, seeing what's happening and what she must do. Ugh. And she's, you see, she's got that stank face, like, oh, you know, like, that sucks, but she's holding onto the flower on her left side, which is her receptive side, reminding herself of her true divinity, of what she truly deserves. She doesn't de deserve this mess, this toxicity. So maybe this is an underlying effect for both energies. Maybe she just got out of this energy and this is more focused to the male energy, that there's um, a need for rest, real, not yeah, to ease up on things as far as relaxation, to retreat, to heal from all of this. Because I get the sense that this empress that was fully pronounced in both the <laughs> clarifying and uh, the initial storyline, he lost someone that was really good to him. Something that really shook up his world. You see the tower, right? That called him out for his misdoings, his mis 
his misdeeds, whether that be relative to their relationship or isolated within his own doing. He's fuming. He's trying to grab a hold, or, you know, she is, whatever, trying to grab a hold of this reality, right? I get the sense that this is more of the male aspect, the king of, yeah, and looking at the fuller scope of it. Yeah, do you see his, the, the garbs? This is more indicative of a jester, of a fool, someone who is rather inexperienced. And I, I, I get that there's uh, an, a highlight, an emphasis to the Three of Swords energy, which is heartbreak. So he feels really upset at himself, knocking himself down for this frightful energy of causing heartbreak. But also, as a mirror, he's he's it's cycling through his mind it's right by his head you see this this cycle of defeat of heartbreak and it's something that is necessary in order to feel and understand that and that he was a part of that energy right see how that sword is pointing to his uh sacral chakra and again the sacral chakra identified here so he has a definite part in that. He messed up. He messed up. It's indicative in this card. So he needs to fess up. He needs to face them, confront them on his own. His inner demons. Let's go ahead and read that card. Four of Swords. The girl on the ground is dreaming again. Her visions illuminate the tomb and keep four roses in bloom. Three swords are plunged into the earth to mark her place of sleep. Four of sword lies buried beside her. Re-energizing oneself. Rest, retreat, exile, inverted thought. The contemplation over what has fully transpired. Right? That's, that's the reason why he needs to... And both of them, actually, I think she's more advanced, though, because she's moving into this energy. He definitely needs to understand the scope of what he's done. Because if this is to regenerate in some aspect, then he needs to know how to come correct. Okay? Because this lady is all about you know, understanding the scope of strategy as well. She's mastering it. It's part of her throne. It's foundation. Yeah? Before the, before the throne is set in, she's got the foundation, and that's her foundation. She's not playing games anymore. This is, this, is for, this is for real. That's her ground. As, as above, so below. Mm -hmm. Practical spirituality. Mm -hmm. So, when we look at this, maybe, you know, maybe it's not going to regenerate. But, whatever the case may be, this dude needs to revive himself through the context of the real truth behind everything that has transpired. So he doesn't doom himself into another relationship that, that could lead to the same heartbreak, that could close those doors, that heart space of not just self, of the, of the other person that you are conversing with, that you are converging paths with. So I feel like regardless of whether or not the relationship regenerates later down the road, it's this, this guy needs to elevate. Yeah. Okay, so the heart and soul card is... Oh my gosh, I, I'm about to, I, I felt like almost tearful for a second. Okay, you want to go ahead and take a snapshot of that? That's pretty interesting. Okay, it says, old feelings are resurfacing and again you find yourself on an emotional roller coaster. Don't fight it. Instead, allow these feelings to surface without judging them. They are neither good nor bad. They're simply a part of you. Like I said, that cellular, like, regeneration, right? The, the lizard, right? The regeneration of the tail. Um, the, that extra resilience. Okay. Okay. They're simply a part of you. Own them. Embrace them. And love them. 
<laughs> oh my gosh. Bless the past and be grateful for the deep and profound healing that is taking place. Oh my gosh, spirit, you have done it again. Whoa. Whoa. Okay, just for the wild card, I want to see what's on the back of the deck. It might be overkill. I know, spirit, I know, I know, I know. But you know me. Okay, so on the bottom of the deck is this card, which looks like the sun to me. From your soul's perspective, this life is just a page in the never-ending story where you and those around you all have a specific role to play, yet remember this role is not uh, the real you. For you are much more than your personality and current circumstances. Your true immortal self cannot be defined. You are that star being, right? That boundless energy, right? So, so act like it, yeah? Remember it. Oh my gosh. So it wasn't overkill spirit. <laughs> How intense is that? Okay, so I get the feeling this is like a soulmate relationship. Soulmate, karmic, twin flame, whatever you want to call it. This is, this is not the end all be all is the impression that I get. This is a, simply a snapshot in your, in your legacy. This is, a, this is an ongoing piece, and it's not to define you in a concrete, complete sense, comprehensive sense. This is just um, a passing phase, and you, I don't want to minimize it into something as min minuscule as a passing phase, but it has its own energy of turning the, the wheels, the cogs, the, um, that wheel of fortune to your to your greatest potential, yes? And whether that be refining your identity of, uh, your, your definition of, of love through self, being able to depict that in your outward relationships, the whole course of this encompassing the fact is to Embrace what's in front of you. Mm -hmm. And to understand it in the capacity of its divine nature. To help elevate you. To help you transcend and ascend. And helping others do the same. Right? Oh, cool. That's so cool. <laughs> okay, so I hope you enjoyed this message. This is like my first kind of love reading and um like for reals <laughs> and i i understand this i feel it i'm not going to disguise that fact you know you, you get that subtle effect where is tina a part of this <sighs> the answer is i understand these energies i totally get it and that's why I'm able to speak more on it. So, anyhow, I hope this has helped you or will help you in your future relationships in calling out uh, these, these snapshots. Because right? this is for the collective whole. Everyone will experience this kind of energy. And when you relate it to business, it's pretty much the same thing, right? You can't get down on yourself um, for, for errors. You just need to be able to put them into perspective, forgive and forgive the past, and, and make the most out of it, right? Redemption. Yes, redemption. After reflection and healing. Mm -hmm. Thoroughly. Yeah. I think that's the way to do it. Just moving forward. Not succumbing to this lower vibratory state, right? Error after error. It's got to stop somewhere. Okay. So, 
hopefully you're hitting the like button and subscribe button and sharing and commenting. Commenting, well, I, I understand this is personal, but uh, I hope to see you again. And thanks for spending some time with me on this. No, no, wait. I need to thank all of you guys for participating in this because I don't know if I would be as resilient. I just saw 1 11 and 11 seconds on the clock. But let me just tell you that I don't know if I would be as resilient if I saw zero viewers consistently on on the dials you know I I don't know if I would be as resilient even having like one or two views is is good for me this is a process I've only been here for a few months and uh, I I understand you know starting from the ground up that you know everybody's different okay so I'm different I'm gonna take delight in it I'll take the glory in my differentness <laughs> <laughs> um, but, you know, this helps me greatly because I do understand these energies and it helps me not only gain composure, but also gain closure. And I think that is truly important in every experience that we take in. Yes. Okay, maybe that's going to be the title of this one. Anyway, have a good night, have a good morning, have a good afternoon, whatever time it is during your you're in your neck of the woods. Uh, I wish you peace. I, yeah, I wish you well. Blessings of love and light. Let's go ahead and thank spirit and our spirit guides, our guardian angels for this moment in time that we are sharing um, the intention of setting our best foot forward the collective whole by reinvesting in ourselves by putting each complication each adversity in our relationships into perspective whether that be just in, on any level any integration of self especially through that through of another living being, right, where we're directly impacting another. We appreciate the wisdom, the blessing, the silver lining in disguise of being able to see the divinity in it. Mm -hmm. Seek karmic composure and yeah move forward with our best foot forward okay so see you again later and have a good one